So I remember a long time ago, I had a conversation with this girl, beautiful girl, and she told me, Tommy, ignorance is bliss. And I was like, yeah, in my head, I'm dealing with a dummy. This girl's a dummy because the conversation was about, for example, if her man was cheating on her, she wouldn't want to know because ignorance is bliss. This way she can be fine. And I thought about it, what a dummy, but I also thought about how I was being a dummy because there were a lot of things I was spending money on that i rather not know that I was spending money the wrong way just so I didn't have to change my habits, okay? And a lot of us live that way, but we all have that little voice whenever we spend money on the wrong things that tells us, hey, this is a mistake, but a bigger voice that says, hey, it's all right, it's on discount, everything's gonna be good, it's a sale, what's the problem, right? Now, I wish back then that I had someone to tell me, Tommy, you're being a dummy, you shouldn't spend money on this, it's a bad idea, and thank God, I had that person, that was my mentor, and back then, my dream, was that I wanted to have some Balenciaga jeans, which were black for around $700, and some Jordans for around $700 too, and a Cuban chain with a white $10 t-shirt, and the chain was about $3,000, and I thought, if I had that, my life would be complete. And when I shared this idea with my mentor, he looked at me and told me, you're a dummy. That is not what you wanna do with your money. You're gonna spend it, you're gonna regret it, and he told me all the reasons why that was not a good idea. And by the end of the conversation, ignorance was evaporated, so I was no longer in a state of blissfulness. So in this video, guys, I'm gonna tell you things that you might not wanna hear, but deep down you know, that I'm telling you the truth. And sometimes it's not what you wanna hear, it's what you need to hear. And my goal is to be 100% honest with you because although I was being a dummy back then, it doesn't mean you're a dummy. No one's a dummy per se, it's just that we do activities and habits that are pretty dumb, okay? That's the idea. So overall guys, smash the like button, I appreciate it a ton. On top of also subscribe, hit the bell to get notified. And remember, I'm not judging you because I've done all these dumb things too. I'm telling it to you so you can avoid it and not have to learn from actually doing it. It's better to learn from somebody else's mistakes. And some of these things here, guys, they're gonna be cheap to acquire and very expensive to own. Cheap to buy, but when you add up the cost, it's gonna be a lot of money. So stay tuned, okay? Now, the very first one is the girl or the guy you choose to date or eventually marry. You know, this doesn't sound like a big deal. I got a girl, it's no big deal, I spend money here or whatever. But if you really have somebody that is not on the same page with you when it comes to your finances, it can be one of the worst decisions ever. Because you have someone, maybe like yourself, you wanna get into the habit of saving money, and this person just wants to spend the money. And it kinda, it kinda breaks down to the point where it gets to this, okay? Here's an example. It gets to the money I make is my money, the money you make is your money. And it's kind of like you have this partnership with these individual parts and it makes no sense because in reality, the whole goal of that, of being in a relationship in a sense, is that you get to work with somebody to make the, the load a lot less heavy and to have the process be a lot more easier. So we're both working towards the same goal, we'll get there faster. But if I'm trying to go one way, you're trying to go another way, you're not actually making any progress. And the worst thing ever is you save all the money and they spend all the money and then something happens and now they have to rely on your money. And it's kind of like, is that really fair, okay? So be sure the person you date doesn't have to be rich. Just They just have to have, for example, the right mindset when it comes to money. Now, number two, the things you watch, AKA TV. You know, a TV, is only about $200 these days, maybe $500 for a 4K TV or $2,000 if you want something very, very fancy. But overall, the upfront cost of a TV is very cheap relative to what it costs you annually to actually have that thing in your house. Let me explain, because I don't mean cable and I don't mean subscriptions like Disney Plus. What I'm talking about is the time the average person spends watching TV. And that time, by the way, is about four hours a day, of a day okay? So that means four hours a day times 365 days in the year, that's about 1,460 hours every single year spent on this TV. Now let's say you just made $10 an hour with that time, that's around $14,600. So when you think about a $400 TV, 
paying $14,000 worth of time is just too expensive. I personally can't afford a TV, okay? Now, I do have a TV, and one of my goals is that whenever I watch TV, I do it for like an hour or two max, and I try to be, for example, on my bike, you know, the bike thing you use to do exercise, that way I'm also exercising while I'm watching TV. It's okay to take a break, but it's not okay to pay $14,000 a year. Maybe a thousand, two thousand a year, not that bad, but 14,000 is just a ridiculous amount of money, okay? By the way, one tactic I started using is, I rather watch a lot of things that help me repetitively. When I go on YouTube, I watch the same motivational videos, the same talks, the same finance stuff, because if it helps me, it helps me, but just being distracted all the time doesn't help me whatsoever. Now, number three is lottery tickets. I mean, $2 don't sound like a big deal when the outcome is to be able to make like millions of dollars if you actually win. Probability is you're never gonna win. And when you take that $2 and you say, well, $2 a day, no big deal, we spend $4 a day, you're looking at around $500 every single year. And that's where things get expensive because over time, all this money you spent, all this money you spent, is just going down the drain. And it makes absolutely no sense. And if you would have invested that $500 a year into, for example, some investments for 30 years, earning you 11%, that would be around $110,000, okay, over 30 years. You might say, Tommy, ha, 30 years though for $110,000? Well, you're only putting in $500, okay? That's all you're putting in a year. And guess what? $500 times 30, you're putting in 15,000 and taking out 110,000. I mean, that's amazing. That's a great return overall. If you invest more, you obviously get more. But I'd rather be 30 years into the future saying, I play the lottery, I never won, than be 30 years into the future and say, hey, I want to be able to say I have $110,000 rather than have nothing, okay? And explain that to your kids. Now, number four is the car you drive. Um, a lot of us, you know, we think in terms of monthly payments, and if we can basically afford the monthly payment, that means we can afford the item. And the true thing is that that's not true. You know, a car, the average car is costing the average American somewhere like almost $1,000 between the payments, the insurance, the maintenance, and everything else that goes into a car, even parking and, and everything, okay? So when you're buying a car, the best advice I can give you is, Buy as a tool, as a utility. You know, we need it, so we need to buy one mostly, depending on where you actually live. But don't be sold on the idea of, I need to have this luxury vehicle because this right here is going to define the type of person I am, okay? In reality, it's not. You know, if you spend $1,000 a month on a car, you know, that money invested for 30 years is somewhere around $2.6 million. But even better yet, okay, $1,000 per month, times 12 is 12,000. In one year, $12,000 can get you a very good, decent car. Maybe two years of savings, that's $24,000 to buy you even a nicer car, okay? But to spend that much money on payments, things you can't afford, makes absolutely no sense. So whenever you buy these luxury vehicles, European makes, German makes, what ends up happening is the parts to fix them are very expensive. So be very careful. I don't recommend it, okay? Um, number five, the phones you buy. I want you to do me a favor right now. This right here is embarrassing, even for me, because I told you guys, you know, I'm not perfect, and I never said I was perfect. My average screen time right now is about, yeah, nine hours and 39 minutes. And you might say, Tommy, well, you work on your phone. No, I work here on YouTube, okay? I'm recording, I do my research, and then I spend like four hours or six hours reading books every day. But this is my actual job, right? But here on social media and on my phone, I could spend probably like two hours a day and be fully done, but this number shows nine hours. That's, that's what it shows, nine hours. And that's embarrassing. But I want you guys to comment down below on what exactly are you spending your time when it comes to um, your phone use. This obviously cost me a lot of money, a lot of time, and in reality, it also costs you brain power. Because whenever you're distracted and you grab a phone, it just builds up your inability to concentrate and to focus. Now, I do want to show you the activities I spend my time on, okay? So this is for today, right now. And today I've spent, for example, around six hours and four minutes on my phone so far. And it's about two, what time is it? Can you guys see it right there? There is the time. I don't know if you can see it. But it's around 2.35 p.m., but the time I spent on my phone has been, for example, on an app to help me focus, on my workout app, my notes, YouTube has been like 30 minutes, and then Instagram has been 
like about 20 minutes. Now, one thing I recommend you do is, guys, when you go to screen time to see this stuff, you want to click on the app you're wasting your time on, and then you want to add, for example, a limit. How much time do you want to spend there? And I'm going to say, hey, I don't need to spend more than like 50 minutes, maybe like 45 minutes max on Instagram per day. So I can go on Instagram, type in 45 minutes right there, and then I can click, for example, add up here, and then boom, now it's limited. So now I literally can't spend more than that on social media. And I can add that, for example, with my other apps. This way it limits it. Use this as a tool. This thing is amazing. Like You can build a whole business with it, but it's become the master of many men and women. And don't let nothing be your master, okay, unless it's God. Now, number six is what you inhale. I don't got to go into detail here with the words because I get demonetized, but, you know, this stuff, you know, there's electric ones now, there's the old-fashioned combustion ones, and there's, like, the traditional ones, and it's all so stupid, you know? Whenever you do those things, you know, like, whether it's relaxing, whether you don't have a problem, it doesn't really matter. It's just one thing, a waste of money and also a big health risk. It's something you can do without. I have a friend about my age, a little younger, and he said, you know, Tommy, do this for fun. Until this day, he's still doing it for fun. And how much money has he spent on it? A lot. So when you spend, for example, maybe like $12 a day on these things, when you add up all that money you're spending on this thing, you could have probably just invested that money in again. In 30 years, say, hey, I have this much money in here. Or I bought my home and I paid it off early because of this stuff. Okay, so that stuff you want to eliminate it, okay? Whether it's for casual use, I just don't recommend it overall. That's my opinion. But if you want to, for example, be able to say, hey, I went from up here, Tommy, in my usage to down here now in my usage, that's good because you're making an improvement. But my opinion is get to zero. But any improvement is better than none, and it's not going to happen overnight. Now, the seventh one is the things you drink. And I, gotta, I don't got to describe those things. And I'm not talking about Pepsi and I'm not talking about Coke, right? I'm talking about the other stuff. You know, that stuff can be very expensive. And on top of that, not just expensive overall, but what it does to your body. You know, all these things, when it comes to health issues, health issues are not a problem. You know, health is one of those things you don't negotiate on. If somebody tells you you're sick and you have $1,000 in savings and it's going to cost you 1000 you got to spend that money. It's not negotiable because you know your health is super important because if you don't have that, you're gone. So that's the idea. So when it comes to these seven things I told you guys right here, these are things that people spend money on. A lot of the times, kind of like a small amount of money initially, but when you add it up over time, it's just massive and massive and massive. And I gave you guys seven, but here's a bonus for making it all the way to the end of the video, and that is food. What you put into your body as fuel, as energy, is going to define, you know, how you live the rest of your life. Now, it's not to say you have like this really strict regimen. I love chocolate. I eat chocolate. But it's all about having a balanced diet, right? And making sure that your body is healthy. One of the worst times I ever had in my life was when I was at the peak of my financial. Well, not the peak because I was the peak at that moment. But, you know, you get better over time. But I was making a lot of money, a good amount of money, okay? And then I was also just like super sluggish, unhealthy, fat, and I was kind of like, okay, I have this, but I don't have that. It's better to have both. Both is better. All right? Always think both. But guys, that is it for this video. Comment down below. Let me know if this was helpful. And comment down below, I made it. So I know you made it all the way to the end of the video. And again, what can you do to basically improve on all of these things? When it comes to TV, I love TV shows. I love TV. But I find a way where it's not dominating my time, where I'm spending four hours or six hours a day watching TV after the moment of work because it makes absolutely no sense, right? Self-improvement is really important. Now, as always, guys, up here is another video. Over here is my page. Subscribe. And as always, long-term team officially out.